Facts and Peppers, you could have been watching this video the moment it came out. By going to healingyourself.life and subscribing to our new sister channel, Healing Yourself. See you there. slides now or sure sure, sure that'd can. be great that would be great yeah. I can enlarge it here there now this is the could you see that yeah, that was your arm huh yeah, yeah that's my oh, arm my. the right arm okay uh, I was cleaning my lake property and I got a bite this is within less than 24 hours yes yes this is the perfect target yes. signal. Yes. This is the tick, okay. Exodi specific and tick in, 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 in uh, so, British Columbia. So you actually okay. had the you found that the physical the tick, tick was still there and, oh, and yeah. the target, and, yep, and, uh, same thing, yep. Yeah, yeah. okay. That's uh, feeling familiar. And uh, what yes, I did very... to treat it, I used two, one method. I used cannabidiol um, paste. I put it right on oh, the rash okay. after, after the tick was uh, taken out. And within two days, the rash was gone. Wow, okay. Okay, but I wasn't sure, absolutely sure that the penetration of the CBD into the skin it would be sufficient to kill everything. Right. So I took amoxicillin as well. Okay. Just to be doubly sure. How long? What? How long a course of treatment did you stay on the amoxicillin? Uh, four weeks. Four weeks. Yeah, okay. opposed to the ten yeah. days. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah and I know they say two capsules is all you need. Yeah, but, no. but okay, what it'll do? The two capsules will kill the spirochete on the surface, like yeah. here. Yeah. But the, the tick, not just uh, giving uh, injecting spirochetes, is injecting the survival forms. The survival forms take a longer period of time to mature. And become spirochetes, and therefore the antibiotic is need to kill it as it matures, and that's why the four weeks is a minimum amount so of time. So you're describing the life cycle of the of of the survival form Lyme disease uh, survival forms. In other words, it injects these little cysts, which are these hard to kill uh, yeah. capsules of it. And when they finally erupt open and turn back into the yeah. mature that, spirochetes, that's why it was, then they, then the that's why okay. The antibiotic is already in the serum. It'll kill them as they mature. Right. And it, 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 most of them are gone in, in one month. Okay. Uh, now here, uh, my, 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 my partners did a study on the live spirochetes. And uh, it showed you the corkscrew uh, form. And this is in uh, BSK, uh, Balfour Stoner Ke Kelly fluid. And this shows you the spirochete in motion going one way yeah and they're very adept and uh, they have 138 genes so they're highly intelligent insect Whoa. and um, bacteria bacteria uh, spirochete. yeah yeah spirochete. and here it goes backwards and forwards by completely turning their coat right around yeah and in a fluid solution it becomes uh, into clutch clusters like this. Uh -huh. And you can see these as foreign floaters in the eyes. If you had Lyme disease, you get these floaters. Uh -huh. you, wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to see a single uh, spirochete like that. But when you see it like clusters, then you get foreign body reactions in the fluid in the eye. Okay. That's what my, my theory is that that's what causes the floaters. Uh -huh. and, uh, and for some reason, when they get into this situation of being threatened by either by temperature, uh, toxicity, chemicals, antibiotics, they go into these jelly-like forms. These are the biofilms that form on the spirochete. Okay. And that is the protective agent for the spirochete. And when that happens, the spirochete uh, is, survives in the body and causes chronic Lyme disease. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this is, again, my own theory as to why many people require antibiotics for such a long period of time. Right. And, and we thought the uh, biofilm only uh, occurred in the fluid, but Dr. Eva Sapi, who is uh, my associate who is doing research with us, she found that there was live, uh, uh, not particles, but um, these biofilm built up in the body, protected the body from antibiotics, uh, antibodies, mm -hmm. and um, white blood cells. Okay. So that's why uh, the biofilm has to be really considered to be removed before we get a proper treatment right yeah that, that's one of the things we keep hearing is that people think that they're they're cured yeah. but then it keeps coming back and it's not so much that that's it right came back as it yeah, never really it left. never left yes it never left either the biofilm or the uh, survival forms that are not treated okay. properly yeah 
Uh, this came to me from the MS Association. Canada has the highest MS in the world, 340 per 100,000. Wow, okay. And you, where does it stop? It stops at the Alaska-Canada border and the USA-Canada border. Why? Because we as doctors are not diagnosing. I accuse my profession uh -huh. of a misdiagnosis and calling many cases of Lyme disease MS. Uh -huh. And mm -hmm. also not only that, uh, chronic fatigue syndrome, yes. uh, ALS, um, Parkinsonism, mental disease, arthritis. We call it everything but Lyme disease. And why do we have the highest Lyme in the world? And if you look over here on the next one, why do we have the stop? Why did it stop at the border? Uh huh. Yeah, right. Why, why would it do we, that? Uh, yeah. 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 I mean, you are a little colder, but they're surviving. This. this, this Oh, they're surviving. Yes. And this whole area is going to become darker and darker. Mm, okay. And this was uh, back in 2001, 2002, up to 2010. Okay. Every year, now if you put the whole thing together, it's all black in here. All black in here. Wow. If you put a black in here, and you see specks of yes. it everywhere. Yes. Now, okay. And each speck represents what? A reported a case. Tick, a report a tick, okay. a serologically reported a patient. Okay. Yeah. But if it's one tick, there's a 3,000 more ticks in that same area. Okay. So this whole area now is saturated with ticks carrying the Lyme spirochete. And eventually, this is going to be all black, just like here. Oh, my. Wow. And we have a major pandemic. Okay. Wow. We have to be more aware of what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> and this is, comes from the World Health Organization about positive serological cases in continental Europe right up to the Arctic Circle. Mm -hmm. And here in Canada, again, at the Alaska border and at the 49th parallel separating Canada from the States. <laughs> the, yeah. And uh, here in BC, I was reading a lot with people outside of the, our Canada. And then and there six doctors here were treating. No, they're no longer treating. They are no longer half prices or they have been threatened. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. That's just, yeah. wow. But uh, we're not the only ones. I had a Dr. Uh, Ross who practiced here. Okay. He, um, he was given a letter, and he won't be practicing <gasps> any Lyme disease next month, he told no. me. No. Do you have any and, uh, uh, any why? clue as to yeah. why this why are they um, doing that? persecution yeah. of li Lyme literate well, I doctors? Don't, I, I don't know. I really don't God. know. The evidence is there. I've shown them over and over again. Uh, when I showed them this other map of, of this, they said, oh, yes, yes, of course. Uh, don't go to the States or Germany to get your blood test done. Those are all false positives. Oh, oh my don't gosh. Don't waste your money. Yeah. He called it a money grab. I have doctors who, in fact, it's these doctors saying, it's all a money grab. It, 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 don't go to the States. You're wasting your money. God, go disturbing. by the Canadian regulation. ELISA test is an absolute answer to Lyme disease and the, I call it a BS myself wow I'm not Trump but I call it <laughs> <laughs> that's good uh, that it it just seems like almost I mean if you were a conspiracy theorist you'd think they the government our governments are trying to hide something why yeah. you know what what I don't it, it just doesn't know. make any sense to me it does not make sense right, right, than, how can you look at this map yeah. of, of these ears yeah. And it's going black. Yeah, and people are Buckley suffering. Street. I mean, this is yeah. a disturbing thing. Is it? There is the commonest, yeah. commonest cause of death is suicide because they see up to twenty, thirty doctors saying there's absolutely nothing wrong with you, oh, gosh. except that you're mental. You got too many things wrong with yes. you. It can only be explained by one thing: right. a mental case. Oh, you're gosh. a mental case. Go and see a psychiatrist. And many of the people that I consult with and give free advice to are to are on antidepressants, tricyclics, and oh my gosh. Uh, you know, SSRIs and SNIs. They, they're just covered with all sorts of antidepressants mm -hmm. and, and narcotics, mm -hmm. uh, fentanyl patches, and morphine uh, long acting agents. And none of that's going to create and, health and wellness for no. them. No, it's gonna restore no, 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 them. no, no. So, I have been, as you are aware, I have been directing a lot of the patients with Lyme disease just for the subjective uh, relief of pain and suffering, okay? Not realizing when I first started that it was giving a relief of, the, of, uh, of uh, an antibiotic effect. But when, you know, some people said, Dr. McCammy, after I've been on it for three years, I have no more Lyme disease symptoms. That's when I found Dr. Sapi. Uh -huh. okay. Oh, this is, okay, this is when you're talking about the cannabidiol. Yeah, yeah okay. 
Yeah, she confirmed it for me that the cannabidiol from hemp killed the spirochete. Now the biofilm. Now we're working on the eggs. And I'm hoping eventually this will become the answer. I'm hopefully too that there's a vaccine being produced in Europe, hmm. which is initially showing good good uh, results. But there was a um, vaccine that came out about oh, 15 years right. ago, 10 years ago. Yes, I remember Ly- hearing about that. Ly- Ly- Limerix and. Uh, they brought me a whole bunch of samples, and I said, how are you preparing it? They said, oh, we'd either uh, ultrasound it, heat it, dry it, or detoxify it with chemicals. I said, if you do that, you're going to cause an autoimmune reaction in the human body. Mm. I don't want anything to do with that. I turned them down. Yeah. Mm. Yet, what happened? An autoimmune reaction has occurred, causing severe arthritis in many people. Wow. And now it's been taken off the market. Okay. But the one in Europe, so far... They said it's been successful, and that may be the answer. And then I bet you, I bet once they get that vaccination, I mean, this is just my thought, is that then all of a sudden all these Lyme cases will be go. Oh yes, it was Lyme all along well, because we have a profitable we, treatment because no, you Lyme have Lyme. a treatment that will actually be effective. It it just saddens me that it goes so unrecognized. That's uh, we've we've talked with Dr. Jane Nielsen, uh, who's a Lyme literate MD, talking about he's talked a lot about the conflict of interest in in the medical profession. That can be a lot of what drives uh, sometimes what seems like not patient centered, mm-hmm. or, or where patient outcome isn't the primary motivation, but right. but profit yeah. motive for big pharma. What is this image you're showing us now? This is a cluster of uh, ticks. Oh my gosh! Who are, what? Who are all who are on a that's on a branch, and this is near oh, the Alaska. This beautiful flower I mean, is not a flower? Oh. It's not a flower. It's a branch. Oh. It's a single branch. Oh, gosh. With about, we estimated about 15,000 ticks on that. That looks like a National a Geographic moose. symbol in the yeah. bottom right corner. Uh, 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 yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's gross. A moose, a moose came by, oh. and all those ticks embodied itself onto the tick. No. In, in Grand Prairie, there were some tick, uh, ticks found on a moose that was staggering, and it was coming into civilization. And it's not mm. looking for food, it's looking for health. Right. Because it was, it was totally blistered oh. with these ticks. Oh. And if you think about it, one to two cc's of uh, blood taken by these 1,000 yeah. ticks, that's a liter of blood. Yeah, that's huge, yeah. These ticks are being exsanguinated by the, the, the ticks. And uh, some uh, the specialists say, oh, look, those are just animal ticks. It wouldn't affect human beings. But in Alberta... They found that ticks taken off animals, wild and domestic, to, uh, 10, uh, 10% or 20% of them were Exotis pacificum, which are carriers of Lyme disease. Okay. In other words, in this cluster, if there's um, 15,000, yeah. a good 30,000 could be from the... Uh, um, or 3,000 3, out of 15, uh, yeah, okay. 3,000 or 15,000 could be from Exodes pacificum, which is a carrier of Lyme disease in British Columbia and Alberta. Out east, it's in Scapularis primarily, but in, in British Columbia, it's primarily Exodes pacificum. Okay. So this is what's happening in our society. Um, our why are so, I was going to ask, why are the ticks <gasps> being so prolific? I mean... Because of the warming effect of the world. Okay. Before, with uh, temperatures in um, Canada being so low, uh-huh. sub-zero weather for maybe two or three months. It would keep them at bay. They kill, kill all the ticks, and now it's the other way around. Okay. Very few are dying, and most of them are surviving, and that's the difference. Wow, okay. And the deer mice, are, our population, is go, uh, growing up like mad. Uh-huh. And then the con- that combination creates a disaster situation, and the moose population in North America is down 50% in all of North America. Wow. It's hard to, you look up the moose population yeah. in, in the computer and look up moose and ticks, and you're going to be just shocked at what's happening. Wow. What's happening to the moose, what's happening to probably other animals as well. Right. Yeah, I would assume that ticks yeah. don't care what animal they get on. They just, yeah. yeah. This is a Saudi specific tick, a single female this, in this uh, 5,000 5, eggs Ew. in this one, one, one single <laughs> tick. That's just gross. It's two, and two years' time, mm. half, of, half of those would be 2,500 females mm. will lay 3,000 eggs, average. Oh, my gosh. You're looking at, you're looking at millions of eggs. Yes. And in another two years, that same cluster of females, uh, counting millions, yeah. are going into billions. Wow. This is happening in our forests right now, oh up to the arc, up to the Arctic Circle. 
and we got to get the doctors aware yeah. of what's happening. You got to learn. Now, how I got involved with um, CBD is I developed the brain tumor. You, you can see it yes, here. Yes, yes. This, this was your brain tumor. This is my brain wow. tumor. And it, and it narrowed out. Does your family ever get exasperated with you for stockpiling such things as paper towels, bottled water, or toilet tissue? Well, they certainly can't object to you stockpiling money. Silver, the only money recognized by the U.S. Constitution. And your first 10-ounce bar of pure silver can be had at spot price with no premium by going to sdbullion.com slash rp. And when you buy it that way, you'll be supporting Reluctant Preppers as well by going to sdbullion.com slash rp. Thanks. This is a quick update to thank you for building our number of patrons to 70 and growing on patreon.com slash reluctant peppers. Soon, when we reach 100 active patrons, we're going to start sending out a one-ounce U.S. Silver Eagle each and every month to one active subscriber, so you don't want to miss out on that. Please help us grow by subscribing today at patreon.com slash reluctant peppers.